Small business working capital, what it is and why it is critical to your company. Maybe you, you've never heard about the accounting term working capital, but that's one of the key metrics to your company's success. Working capital affects multiple facets of your company, including planning for long-term growth, avoiding bankruptcy, and paying your personnel and suppliers on time. To ensure your working capital works properly, figure out your current levels, estimate your future needs, and find ways to make sure you always have enough funds. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm very happy to have you today. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. If you're doing as marvelous as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Before I get into the nitty gritty here, I just want to first tell you that you need to understand how working capital works. Now, what is working capital? Now, you can get a sense of where you stand right now by determining something called your working capital ratio and this is a measurement of your company's short-term financial health when i'm talking about short term i'm talking about less than 12 months okay so here is a working capital formula current assets divided by current liabilities this is the working capital ratio so current asset is everything you owe you own that can be converted into cash within 12 months Current liabilities or obligations and debts you need to repay within 12 months. So think about current in, in accounting means less than 12 months. All right. Now, let's just give an example. Let's say you have assets of 10 million and you have current asset rather of 10 million and current liabilities of 5 million. In this case, your working capital ratio is two to one, right? This is a great, very healthy ratio. but you know, depending upon your industry, if your industry is cash intensive, if your industry, you know, if you use a lot of cash in your industry, this this might be good or not, depending upon your situation. So current assets include everything from accounts receivable to cash in the bank, you know, to um, uh, to prepaid insurance that that, you know, things you have paid in advance that you haven't you haven't actually um, incurred yet in the in the next 12 months and when it comes to current liabilities is everything from credit card to line of credits to short-term loans right now so we talked about working capital ratio now let's talk about net working capital now net working capital is an estimation it tells you how much money you have readily available to make current expenses right again when i'm talking about current expenses i'm talking about expenses that you have to you have to pay within 12 months so your net working capital, the formula is, is uh, very simple. It's current asset minus current liabilities, right? So you, you want to think about, you know, again, short-term asset. When you hear words, when you hear terms like short-term assets, current assets, that's the same thing. Current liabilities, short-term liabilities, it is the same thing, right? So short-term or current assets include inventory that you you want to, you expect to convert to cash within 12 months accounts receivable and cash right short-term liabilities or current liabilities include accounts payable right that, that's the money you owe vendors and other creditors as well as accrued expenses for salary taxes and and debt also it is very important when we have a conversation around um working capital that to, to, to know that working capital is a function or the outcome of your operational needs you need to you need to understand your needs you know now getting a true understanding of your working capital needs may involve you know sketching month by month inflows and outflows for your business what I mean by that is that you you need to know how much cash you're getting in January if you want to do it on a on an annual basis, you want to figure out what kind of money you're getting in January, February, all the way through December, and what kind of money you are spending, you know, in, in, in the following 12 months. Now, there is a great tool in accounting that helps you do that. It's called the Statement of Cash Flows. The Statement of Cash Flows allow you, allows you to see basically where your money is going. And that statement has three categories 
you have something called operational activities, operating activities rather, investing activities and financing activities. So all these three categories, you can basically plot your financial strategy for the next 12 months. And that allows you very, very importantly to see where you where you're fine and where you know which season or which months of the year can be particularly challenging for you when it comes to growing your company so the bottom line here is that you want to have you, you want to be able to plot your needs and you want to project you know your operational needs so that you can identify months in advance when you have more money going out than coming in and then when the, the cash flow gap is widest right because if you think about it if you have if you're able to do this thing on a monthly basis, so you know, for instance, January, I'm having $1 million coming in, but I'm having, I'm spending half a million. In February, I'm having 2 million coming in, but I'm spending 3 million. March, I'm, I'm having 1 million coming in, but I'm spending 7, 700,000. You can tell month by month what your needs are. And this is where working capital will come in place because once you understand your need you can find ways to boost them all right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. If you're having, if you love the, the content clarity and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and uh, turn on the notification bell so that you do not miss any future show. We drop shows every single day, rain or shine. Now, I want to talk to you. Also, comment below. Let us know what you believe, what you think about the topic, and uh, how you're able, if you're an entrepreneur and, or in a small business owner or a business owner in general, how you're able to finance your, your operations. Comment below, share, like, and subscribe. Now, understand why your business might need extra working capital. You need to have the additional working capital, but why? There are a lot of, there are a lot of reasons why. For instance, seasonal differences right so if you have seasonal seasonal differences in cash flow this could lead to you needing extra capital to gear up for a busy season or to keep the business operating when there is less money coming in right now you have to understand this is not just a, your your company most most organizations most organizations will have times when additional working capital is needed to fund obligations to suppliers the employees and the government right while waiting for payments from customers now additional working capital can help improve your company in other ways for, for example this can help you take advantage of, of uh, let's say you have a, you know a supplier has discount for you if you pull if you purchase in bulk but you don't have the money so you can buy this thing store in the, in the warehouse you can buy the you know whatever inventory you need at a very very good price and store in the warehouse and sell it later on or use it in your production processes later on this helps you make a lot of money why because you are actually in essence reducing the cost but your 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 sales price remain the same remains the same that means your profit margin is increasing right another thing you can do is that you can also you use working capital to pay temporary employees or to cover other project related expenses so what I'm trying to tell you here is that working capital is very it's very 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 important even if you even if your, your your business is making a lot of cash and you are sitting on cash you can still need you can still use extra extra working capital to seize opportunities there in the market you can even expand you can even buy out a a arrival right now how do you boost your working capital you can basically do it several ways you can get a lot of credit right this is uh, something that is designed to finance temporary work and capital needs the terms on those are more favorable than those for business credit cards and your business can draw only what it needs when it's needed right so this is something that and when it comes to lines of credits some companies some banks will give you an unsecured revolving line of credit or a secured line of credit depending upon your company's credit score and your personal credit score now the uh, a business credit card can also be a convenient way for you and your top employees to cover incidental expenses for 
things like entertainment, travel, and other needs, right? Now, it's, it's just very important to realize that it's not advisable to use a business card, a business credit card rather, as a working capital tool because you have some credit cards have higher interest rates. There are higher fees for cash advances and it's just it's just a trap that you might run you might run up excessive debts all right so how do you qualify for a working capital line of credit i said i said this before you want to make sure that you have uh your company has a great great credit right that you are able to uh, make a case about the overall health of your balance sheet your you have to show the bank your working capital ratio your net working capital your annual revenue and other factors right now one thing you want to really also understand is that just be ready to show your personal financial statements also because lenders actually when it comes to small business small small businesses most lenders believe and in reality that's something that's true that the company's finances are intertwined with the with the individual with the entrepreneurs personal finances so they the bank will want to see your personal financial statements your credit score your tax return right now maybe you might be asked for a personal guarantee of repayment all right so just make sure that you kind of think about that beforehand another thing that is very important to think about here is that uh, a rule of thumb when it comes to working capital line of credits make sure it does not exceed 10 percent of your company's revenue right now when it comes to a working capital please also don't confuse short-term working capital needs and longer-term permanent requirements right because for long-term permanent permanent needs you will need another type of financing right you, you don't want to tie up your working capital line of credit on this expenses you don't want to buy something that's not going to generate revenue within 12 months again the the key idea here is when you think about working capital think automatically about a period of less than 12 months all right because that's the only way you can set yourself up for long-term growth you know if you can't predict everything about running your company just make sure that you have at least a clear view of your incoming flows and your outgoing flows in other words you have a clear view of working capital so you can operate smoothly today and in the next 12 months i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi i hope you are doing fantastic i'm still here talking to you about small business working capital what it is and why it is critical to your company now how do you bet how do you manage your small business cash flows how to better manage your small business cash flow now there are several ways to do this you got to identify the areas where you spend money right if, if, if you're you have to identify the uh, the outflows of cash one such outflow is uh, payment to suppliers so you can negotiate with vendors right if you you know talk to your vendors about for instance extending due dates on accounts payable or you can even try negotiating longer payment terms right it's very important to have this kind of conversation from the get-go don't wait until the the, the partnership has uh, been engaged or the the partnership has started to bring those issues to, to the table you want to talk to your vendors up front right and if you are honest and reasonable about the time you request to make your payment your chances of getting a longer billing cycle will likely go up right so you have to look at this as a win-win it has to be a win-win because the bottom line here is that your vendors are also in business and they like you want to get paid on time right so it's all about managing your cash flows but also seeing the the, the image or the picture from the other side Another thing you can do also is that to build something called a financial cushion. Now, you, you, your business will go through fluctuations and this has nothing to some of them you have control over, some you don't. The economy goes through stuff, you have uh, seasonal trains, you have up and downs, cash cycles. Make sure that during, during periods when you have a positive cash flow, put money away. 
to cover expenses during the down cycle. It's very important. You know, if I were to use a metaphor, this is the the rainy day fund, the emergency, the emergency cash fund that individuals have to have. Here, you have to create something similar for your business. So you want to keep cash away where, you know, and again, I'm not asking you to tie up to tie your cash up into some kind of investments. You know, you want to create maybe a certificate of deposits or a money market account, you know, to sort of help you. And you want to do this for your business, not for yourself. So that the, the you know, the money will be sitting there in that account and uh, potentially earning some interest income. And you will use that cash during a down cycle. Another way to better manage your smart, your small business cash flow is to establish smarter payments right how do you how do you actually make how do you avoid late fees and penalties you can make payments online you can use you can take advantage of mobile banking capabilities mobile banking features that your financial institution probably has you just have to ask right you can control cash flow with online direct payments so that people's individuals rather or businesses get paid on time because Ultimately, if you make payments electronically, you can hold on to your money longer, right? Because you can decide when the funds will be taken from your account, right? So, I mean, for instance, let's say you have a bill that is due in 45 days. Don't pay it in 30 days, right? You just, you schedule it to pay it on the day is due. So, the, you know, like on the very, very last day, you have a cost of opportunity if you if you pay early right because you can put that money somewhere and generate some ink some interest income another way to um to better manage your small business cash flow actually your business cash flow not small business your business cash flow think about upgrading your payroll systems right because if you are able to use and not just the payroll system you have a a lot of uh, other but yeah payroll is a big one but i'm talking about payroll i'm talking about the whole software that runs everything from payroll to employee benefits management right so those are those are areas where you can save money you can save time you can save effort and you can increase liquidity you can also switch to electronic invoicing right and you can invoice customers electronically if you have the budget for it you can have you can buy software they have things called a crm so crm is uh, essentially crm stands for client relationship management software and part of that is uh, you know the crm will have features that allow you to bill your customers electronically the idea here is to be able to do things you know electronically and automate as much as possible so you can save some money all right Okay, we're about to wrap up today's show. I hope you enjoyed having this conversation. At least I did. <laughs> Here's a recap. So today I talked about three things. Understand how working capital works. Understand why your business might need extra working capital and how to better manage your small business cash flow. Thanks for listening to me and uh, I will see you next time. Until then, stay Marvelous. <laughs>